What is up everyone and welcome to some more F1 23 my team career mode and we are here for a brand new season it is round number one of season six of our Jaguar racing career and we're going to be kicking off this season in a different way to the way that we have kicked off the previous five seasons we will not be starting at the Bahrain Grand Prix this year for the first time in this game cycle we will be starting at Saudi Arabia instead and I am very much looking forward to this race I have worked pretty hard over the, uh, the last week or so to ensure that everything can uh, go smoothly and according to plan and I'm deciding that I am going to start experimenting with some new setups at some of these tracks particularly the ones that haven't historically gone so well for me like Saudi Arabia because ultimately the reason why we lost the Constructors Championship last season yes was partly due to some perhaps slightly lackluster performances from my teammate Jack Doohan who is no longer at the team but uh, also, you know, I definitely think we could have had, we could have had a case for it if it weren't for some very lackluster performances from from myself at tracks like Saudi Arabia and China and Baku and Zanvoort, uh, Qatar, all of those circuits. You know, I failed to finish inside the points, and I'm sure that that uh, that had a massive impact on our chances of winning the constructors' championship last season. So in order to win it this season, you know, I'm hoping to get on top of my performances and uh, and hopefully we can also have a teammate who will be delivering some slightly stronger performances as the season goes on. So there was the uh, performance chart and you can see that uh, we are the strongest car on the grid for the time being, but uh, you know, the development race will kick off as it always does. We're partnered with Leclerc this season. It's still Norris and Albon at Mercedes and Russell and Perez at Red Bull. Uh, McLaren has maintained Piastri and Magnussen. Uh, we've also got Verstappen at Ferrari now. He's a new driver there alongside somebody brand new who we'll see in a second. Uh, we've got Doohan moving to Haas. We've got uh, Halger and Sargent at Aston Martin. The Alpines and the Williams are the same, as are the Alfa Romeos and the Alfa Tauris. But the two new drivers we have on the grid this season are Jahan de Ruvula, who's been promoted straight to Ferrari, which will be interesting to see if he can immediately start delivering in the uh, in the Ferrari. And then Theo Porsche is finally back after a season and a half on the sidelines after being demoted from Mercedes, and he's back in Haas. So we will see whether he can deliver uh, alongside Jack Doohan, the man who kind of replaced him, but not really. Um, ultimately, it was Albon who replaced him at Mercedes, an and Doohan filled the spot well. at Thanks. McLaren, where, uh, where Albon had left but uh, in any case yes it is Charles Leclerc who as I'm sure if you watched the previous video the recap video uh, you will uh, you will remember that we signed him at the end of the previous season so I'm hoping that a driver who is one of the strongest drivers on the grid pace wise racecraft wise is uh, somebody that can you know if he can't if he can't help us move towards getting a, uh, a constructors championship title I genuinely don't know what more I can do at that point. So I'm hoping that here in Saudi Arabia, Leclerc can get off to a strong start and start delivering good results for us from the off. And we will uh, we will hopefully get a good result here ourselves as well. You know, like I said, tweaking the setup and uh, and tweaking some of my settings yeah, as well, well to see if uh, see if that makes a difference. And hopefully that will allow us to uh, to make you know a good impact. We did a lot of. Uh, facility upgrades there which uh, is more just for completeness sake they're not really necessary at this point because we've basically done everything we need to do career wise which that's maybe one of my biggest criticisms of this game is the fact that even me who is playing with all of my sliders on reduced and all of the AI sliders on increased even even from uh, from about season three for me we'd completely run out of, of new career mode related things to do so Hopefully, maybe the uh, the overhauled driver career that they are supposedly bringing for uh, for the new F1 game, F124. Hopefully, that will represent a shift in uh, in in the career mode, and hopefully, we'll have a bit more to do over a more long term period. That's what I uh, that's what I hope for ultimately. But we will see whether that proves to be true or not. We as uh, as our sort of he's not our engineer but um whoever he is um just said 
Uh, we did end up protecting our development quite nicely over the course of the, the off-season. So that has allowed us to go from being the fifth strongest car on the grid at the end of the previous season to the strongest car on the grid at the start of this season. However, as I told you, the performance standings do tend to change quite significantly over the course of the, uh, the season. And we will see whether that makes a, uh, a fundamental difference to the pecking order or not. But uh, one thing's for certain, I think that these two Alpha Tauris will still be right three. down the bottom, Russell, but Deruvula, we'll see whether that, uh, that proves to be true or not. Daruvala impressing from the off there, P2 in practice one, but we'll see whether he uh, is able to do the same thing in qualifying in the race. Doing it in practice is one thing, but uh, I mean, we weren't even in the top 14 there. We were, we were lucky in pace a little bit, but as I said, I was experimenting with setups a little bit, messing around with brake pressure, brake bias, tyre pressure, all that kind of thing to see if we can ultimately get on top of some of the issues that have been plaguing us at certain circuits over the course of, uh, of the last few seasons or so. So we make our way out into, uh, into Q1 and we are on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. One thing I basically immediately noticed about the new setup that I'm running is that it is incredibly sensitive. It's very, very on the nose. The car is very responsive, which is nice, but uh, yeah, we are we are incredibly on the nose right now. So uh, I think once the tire wear starts to kick in, it's going to be very difficult to uh, to control the car. But in any case, we're going to make it through Q1 here. You can see we're already P12. Sessions over across the line. So 124.6. And that improves us up to P5. So we're comfortably through to Q2. And hopefully it should be business as usual in Q3 as well. You can see Daruvala going fastest there in Q1. Strong performance from the uh, the Indian driver there. Who's just signed for Ferrari. Great result for him. Meanwhile, Lando Norris just ahead of me in P4. Leclerc making it through in P11. Hopefully he can go one further at least. And get through into Q3. Meanwhile, knocked out here. Gasly, Stroll, De Vries, Sargent, the new man in the Aston Martin, being comprehensively outperformed by Hauger, his teammate, who was in P3. And then Porsche is the the, uh, the lowest of the people who actually set a time. Joe Guan Yu failing to set a time in the session for whatever reason, but he will be starting from P22 as a result of it. So we make our way into Q2 now, and you can see we are on a used set of soft compound tyres this time. So, uh, yeah, this is sort of just a banker lap. We're going to try and get in, and then we'll go towards the end of the session on a fresh set of soft compound tyres to improve on whatever time it is we end up doing here. So uh, yeah, we're doing a pretty decent lap time right now, but only so much you can do when you're on a, uh, a slightly weaker set of tyres, let's say perhaps, uh, you know, not quite as much grip in them. So it's a 125.2 for us, and now we're gonna go around again and do a, another run on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. However, as you can see, as I'm rounding the final corner, I left it just a little bit too late. And that means that I didn't make the checkered flag. I missed it by probably about three or four seconds, I would say. And that was the end of qualifying for me down in P16. So, well, this is good because ultimately the setup I chose is a race setup and not a qualifying setup. Leclerc does make it through in P9. Doohan, frustratingly, also makes it through in uh, the Haas, which, uh, you know, shining again is the, uh, the Australian. But yeah, this is a race setup we're using, so hopefully we can make our way through the field in the race tomorrow. We're joining Lawson, Verstappen, Ocon, Perez, and Daruvula. He couldn't make it through into Q3, but we will see now whether we can use this race setup that we have equipped to move through the field as we get into the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. So let's take a look at a topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Oscar Piastri, Albon, Leclerc, Magnussen, Fittipaldi, Sonoda, Hauger, Dewan, Liam Lawson, Verstappen, Ocon, Perez, Deruvula, Robinson, Gasly, Stroll, 
De Vries, Sergeant, Teo Porcher, and Joe Guan Yu. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. I'm joined by Anthony Davidson at the start of a new season, and it is a clean slate. Absolutely anything is possible right now. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice, and they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Okay, so... Leclerc had a pretty good qualifying there and he'll be starting from P5 so we might have to pin our hopes of scoring big points on the new man here today which uh, you know is pretty exciting when you think about it given that it is his first appearance here and already he is being thrown in right at the deep end but for us it is going to be a very difficult affair here to try and make our way through into the points from P16 at a track I've historically not gone so well at. Right, We're going to see whether the, uh, the setup that I've gone for on this occasion which as I said before is very on the nose is going to work out for us. If it doesn't, then uh, I guess we will uh, we'll just try and experiment through the course of the season with uh, with the setups we've already got as well. And if those turn out to be the better ones, then maybe we just need to we just need to you know admit that it's time to get good. But uh, either way, the goal here has to be to just make our way Superb into the top ten there, at Let's minimum, and then hopefully score some good points. And hopefully Leclerc can score some good points as the lights come on and the lights go out. And we've had a pretty decent getaway there compared to some of the cars in front, like Esteban Ocon there is a particularly poor getaway. We're ahead of Perez, we're ahead of Daruvula, ahead of Verstappen and Ocon, and we're up into P12 off of the start. But we are pinched to the inside here. We're going to try and go around the outside as much as we can, but you can see, as I'm on the, uh, as I'm on the outside there, I did not have anywhere to go. Verstappen getting back past me, Ocon getting back past me, Sargent looking for a move on me there. He's made up quite a few positions off the start. Meanwhile, Daruvula has only gone backwards from the beginning of this race and uh, it's not been a uh, not been a good start for the Indian driver in race trim but we will see whether he can make his way through the field as the race unfolds in that I'm sure much faster Ferrari than uh, than the qualifying pace that it has shown but either way we're now going to be setting after Ocon in P13 we raced with him on multiple occasions over the previous season but perhaps none more so important than that uh, that Belgian Grand Prix where we were actually racing for victory at one point in the early stages of that race ultimately the battle for victory ended up coming down to me and George Russell, but uh, Ocon was in the mix. I think he ended up getting a podium that day, and it was Alpine's only podium last season, if I remember correctly. So here we are making our way through into the final sector now, and we'll see if we can get involved in this uh, this little tussle that's going on in front of us, which involves Esteban Ocon, as well as a number of other cars, all the way up to Jack Doohan. We're diving down the inside of Ocon, make our way down the inside of Verstappen as well, and now we are right on the back of Dennis Hauger, who did not have the best of times in Q3. I think he only qualified P9, and he's been overtaken by Lawson and Doohan off the start to find himself in P11. We're going to move to the outside of him now, see if we can get around the outside and get ourselves into that 11th place spot. We almost collect Dennis Hauger there as we have a bit of a snap of oversteer through the first corner but on the exit of the second corner we make our way into P11 so now we're going to set our sights on Lawson and our former teammate Jack Doohan in front as well but as we make our way into lap 5 you can see that they have uh, kind of broken away from us a little bit as we go quite wide there and kiss the wall not once but twice and that allows Logan Sargent to make his way through and up into P11 so Sargent looking maybe a little bit better than his uh, Aston Martin counterpart my former teammate Dennis Hauger in uh, in race trim but um, you know it's early days yet we'll see which one of them wins out if ever if either one of them can get into the points I anticipate that Aston Martin will probably struggle a fair amount this season with the driver lineup they've got not trying to be harsh to, uh, to Hauger or to Sargent Hauger obviously did have a pretty good season last year in fact I think he may have had a slightly better season than Verstappen if I remember correctly but uh, I might not be completely correct about that. I think Verstappen had higher highs, but Hauger was certainly the slightly more consistent driver, I think. So I'm not sure who finished ahead on points in the end. But, uh, you know, Sargent had a tricky season in that Haas last season, and um, Haas opting to change both of their drivers. Nico Hülkenberg obviously retired. Sargent, he's uh, moved on to new things at uh, Aston Martin, and they've been replaced by Duan and Porsche. Porsche, who's currently running down in about P18, I believe, and then Doohan, who is just on the fringes of the points, uh, potentially about to fall out of them if Logan Sargent can catch up to him, which it looks like he might, given that he's now overtaken me. But we will see if we can try and get back ahead of Logan Sargent on the way into uh, on the way into this next 
sector who's going to win out. We're going to squeeze him out a little bit there, and that is going to allow us to make our way back up into P11. And he's fallen away from us a little bit, so I think with this DRS, hopefully we should be able to keep him behind for the time being. But uh, as we make our way onto lap 9 now, you can see it's Verstappen in the Ferrari. You know, this is his third team now, Max Verstappen. He had Red Bull. That didn't go so well. Aston Martin, two years. That didn't go so well. And now he's at Ferrari. Will he finally be able to lift the championship in the prancing horse? We will find out. But uh, in any case, we are going to try and get back ahead of him now. He's outside of the top 10, made his way into P11 just now. But we're going to have the DRS in this next zone. It's going to allow us to keep Logan Sargent and Max Verstappen and my own former teammate Dennis Hauger behind us as we try and sweep back around the outside of Max Verstappen into the second corner on the track who's going to have the better traction it's actually Max Verstappen but uh, can we maybe try and get back at him he's pinched quite close to the inside we're going to try and go around the outside there and somehow we found some space maybe the setup working quite nicely for us there we uh, we got a little bit unfortunate earlier on in the race I think we're quite slow through this first sector on this setup I must be honest but in the other sectors we are absolute lightning so um yeah as long as we can keep them behind in this sector which i mean you can see there's a big train of cars forming up behind me at the moment so maybe maybe we are the problem and maybe the setup isn't working out for us we'll have to wait and see as the uh, the race unfolds but uh, as we continue later on into lap 10 you can see max verstappen is going for a move on us once again and he's going to try and go up the inside into this next corner and uh, we actually make a bit of contact with him there he, uh, he hits us on the inside, maybe we squeezed him a little bit too tight to the inside of the corner, but I'm realising that maybe the setup is not the ideal one for us, on account of the fact that we are 54% on the rear right after just 10 laps. Even on soft compound tyres, this feels like very, very extreme tyre wear. So we will see whether, uh, whether we're able to uh, make this work or not on the medium okay, tyres when we box for them at the end of this lap but meanwhile Max Verstappen going for a move up the inside is he going to be able to hold on to this one this time or are we going to be able to stay ahead of him we will uh, we will battle him through here and I think he's just about got the measure of us on this occasion wasn't room for us to get back ahead of him we make our way through lap 11 and now you can see we're coming under pressure from a lot of cars here the floodgates beginning to open after Max Verstappen makes that move and here is Logan Sargent and Sergio Perez almost squeezing me in between them we have to take evasive action that allows Hauger through and potentially this uh, potentially this Alpine we just about managed to get back ahead of him as well but here comes Sargent and Perez racing into the pit lane and they make contact Sargent gets reset there he smashed up his front wing we ghost through him and that is a very bizarre incident and of course that has brought out a safety car lots of debris in the pit entry where so many people were coming in there an incredibly dangerous incident no idea what sergeant and perez were doing there neither of them wanted to yield and ultimately that ended up with a, uh, a big crash where logan sergeant ended up worse off but maybe not as worse off as me who has to wait for literally everyone to come through there with the exception of logan sergeant who's still changing his front wing of course so we uh we make our way out onto the track again i always forget that the uh, the pit lane uh when it gives you back control it always gives you control in the middle of the corner we almost hit the safety car like we did in that one league race that we did recently but uh we just about managed to avoid it and now at the end of lap 14 we're going to go racing from p21 which is not really where i want to be given that I, I should be about p12 or p13 based on what happened in that uh in, in that accident and, and and whatnot but um you know we'll see if we can fight our way back on these medium tires we're going to try and get ahead of stroll immediately but we have to break nice and early to avoid going in the back of joe so we make our way up the inside of stroll and now we're going to see if we can switch back up the inside of joe and porsche as well two drivers who perhaps are going to have a bit of a battle over who gets that alfa romeo slash kick salva slash whatever seat in uh, in real life but um, for now, uh, they are in different teams in my career mode. And, uh, well, their battle has held me up quite significantly. We, uh, we touched the inside wall there, and that holds us up quite a lot. And you can see we've actually picked up a bit of minor floor damage somewhere as well. No idea where that happened. Maybe from the contact with Verstappen. That's probably the best, uh, the best situation I can think of where that could have conceivably happened. Which is frustrating, because I don't necessarily think that was my fault, but maybe we should have given him more room. But I think that means that we're going to be very slow in the uh, the second stint in this race, because even a little bit of floor damage uh, doesn't do wonders for you. Meanwhile, Lance Stroll playing ping pong with us right now, just um, going for moves that obviously aren't going to work out. And it means that as we make our way into the final sector of the first lap of the safety car restart, we are 
three seconds down on Teo Porcher and Joe Guan Yu. So I think that we are really in danger here with only 10 laps to go of having a extremely poor result here, which is not really my fault as Lance Stroll dives up the inside of me there. We're going to have to try and get him back using the DRS and the battery, not the DRS because it's not been enabled yet, but using the battery. We're going to have to run all the way down to turn one and see if we can contend with Lance Stroll into turn one, hopefully get back past him. But uh, the braking performance is just still not there for me. You know, I've changed the setup drastically to try and improve the braking performance of the car and still nothing. So I'm starting to think like maybe I've been slightly scammed with this setup, especially as you see Logan Sargent. We make it far too easy for him there as he overtakes us around the outside. And we have fallen down now into basically last position. We are in P22 now and um, well, we're already a second off Sargent going through uh, sector one as well. So, as you can see, we make our way to the beginning of lap 21 now. Things have not gotten better for us at all. We're now six seconds down on Lance Stroll. This floor damage coupled with this setup is not the one. It's not king here. And uh, it really got me thinking that uh, I basically, like, should just stay with the setups I was using before. You know, for the next race in Australia, I should just use the setup I was using before. Because this is absolutely woeful compared to uh, compared to the races I usually have around Saudi Arabia. Nothing's quite this bad. Stroll is coming into the pits again, so maybe we won't finish dead last. But either way, you know, 21st and 22nd, there's not really much difference between them. I do not want to be mixing it up with the Alpha Tauris all season. Ideally, I, uh, I have loftier ambitions than that. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to make our way round the uh, the final corner onto the final lap now and uh, we are going to be coming 21st here unless something in incredible and inconceivable happens in uh, in the final lap of the race it is going to be no higher than p21 for us Lance Stroll was catching us but not really fast enough to make a dent in uh, in our advantage at least not enough to uh, to try and go for a move on us but he did catch us in about five laps by about 15 seconds on that fresh set of soft compound tires so that tells you all you need to know George Russell winning the race, but um, yeah, I mean, look, this was a horrible race for me. I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unsubscribe from the, the the channel where I get these setups from. I'm gonna uninstall the game, not buy F124. This really sent me on a downward spiral. This result because we are gonna cross the line to finish P21 for our worst result right, in a race, race we've over. finished since probably win. season one, maybe ever absolutely devastating result for us. Sergio Perez gets driver of the day after putting Logan Sargent in a wall and we are in the mud. So as they climb out of the car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Well, George Russell is the champion of this race and uh, the two-time world champion is going to be hoping to mark out this season with a, uh, a strong start to hopefully challenge for his first world championship since leaving Mercedes, which uh, I believe was about three years ago now, if I'm not mistaken, at least in game seasons, it is Oscar Piastri in P2, but Charles Leclerc, take a bow, he's got a podium for us in his first race of the season. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. George Russell takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. So let's discuss, Ant. Who would you say is a contender for your driver of the day? There's a few contenders, but George Russell definitely stood out, I think. A really solid drive from him today, and one I'm sure the fans enjoyed. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. Red Bull take over as Championship leaders. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Very, very solid result from Charles Leclerc. Kind of saves our bacon here today as I've fallen off completely. Defending world champion I am. Uh, finishing P21. That's not what you would expect to see at all. But we just didn't get it right with the setup today, I don't think. You know, the setup that I, uh, that I, that I used, I think, probably just didn't 
really work out the way I expected it to and I've definitely had more success with the setups I was using before. If you have any suggestions for any setups that uh, that you could recommend, uh, other than from sort of some of the more obvious and popular YouTube channels on the internet, because uh, I've probably already seen them, but if you have any uh, if you have any other suggestions, then uh, you know do uh, do consider you know make, leaving a comment or anything like that, because I'm always on the lookout for for something. You know, I did a lot of preparation in uh, in time for this season tried to uh tried to look at maybe using a new setup experimenting with that and it just didn't seem to work for me here today i think after we got that floor damage especially it was just over but yeah charles leclerc bailing us out a little bit keeping us fourth in the constructors championship after this first race so uh, we're not completely down and out and hopefully if i can start getting some solid results me and him can be getting consistent double points, maybe even double podium finishes for Jaguar Racing. That's uh, got to be the ideal. Next race, of course, is going to be the Australian Grand Prix, which is a, uh, a race that I, of course, have had been on the podium before. I uh, got a P3 there last season. Um, in doing so, prevented Jack Doohan from getting a podium at his home race in what ended up being one of his strongest results for us all season. But, uh, you know, we had to prioritise our championship, and in the end, it didn't make much of a difference because we did end up winning the championship by about 40 points. But still, as things stood uh, at the time, you know, we needed a good result. We'd only had uh, one P5 finish so far that season and then a P10, I believe, in Saudi Arabia. So we were quite far down. This time around, we're going to be even further down because we scored zero points going into the Australian Grand Prix, although there has been one few around, um, you know, certainly this is a, a pretty horrible start to the uh, to the season. Uh, and, and this time we don't even have DNFs to blame. You might remember in season one, of course, we had uh, we had two DNFs to kickstart our career mode, which was, uh, well, certainly not the most optimal viewing content as far as uh, YouTube is concerned, but um, that was what happened and we had, to, we had to take that and we had to deal with it. So we immediately lose ground to George Russell in this rivalry. He had a better qualifying, he had a better race, and he will be you know absolutely laughing after that we're gonna have to try and get back at him almost immediately but uh, you know definitely there is still potential for us to uh, to fight back in this championship we had a hard start to last season and we're having a hard start to this season as well as uh, I just could not get things worked out in the uh, in the optimal window for them to uh, for them to bring me uh, a good result here today but you know Australia like I said it's a track that typically I go a little bit better at and I'm targeting a return to the points hopefully a return to at least the top five if not to the podium in the following race it's a long season anything can happen and we can't be too disheartened by one poor result in Saudi Arabia but that is going to be it for this video so if you enjoyed please make sure you like and subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next one